talk about is sort of four interconnecting themes uh, about ideology, youth, activity and, and purpose and part of the path to victory. Um, you need to have an ideology, like Lawrence was talking about those civic nationalist groups. They haven't got any core principles. It's just a bit of this and a bit of that and what the latest sort of soundbite is. You have to have principles and we have a trinity of principles which are national sovereignty, the ethno-cultural identity of our people and ultimately as well, the economy must always serve the people. I suppose the goal could be summed up simply as a sovereign white nation with a European standard of living. Very simplistic, three things to take into account there, but basically these are the things that we want and we know that millions want. Um, it could be described as simplistic, uh, but as Enoch Powell once said, uh, one day the people will ignore the emergence of mumbo-jumbo and look for the great simplicities, very basic things that they understand and what they intrinsically want. I think that was one of the troubles with the BNP. Some of the people I met after 2009, very decent people, very good patriots, but they didn't have a thorough understanding of core principles and also a general range of policies that the party had, whether it was housing or education or farming and things like that. So that part of it is very important because when you're a candidate or a spokesman, spokeswoman for the party, you need to have the articulation to get your point of view across because the public might be impressed with someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. The same thing applies in business and many other aspects of life. Um, I, I noticed uh, people who, who were inarticulate when I went to account in 2013, the sort of last days of the BNP really. Um, UKIP were quite triumphant, they were very arrogant, they were very confident, they won all the seats, we did very badly. But what I did notice that they were hopeless at not just talking to someone on television, but even dealing with local journalists from a, a local newspaper in South Essex. Uh, they couldn't answer essential questions about where do you stand on sovereignty? What would you do about sovereignty? What is your actual policy on, on this? And what would you do with illegal immigrants and so on? They were useless. They might have won all those seats, but they didn't last them the following year that was turfed out. But they had no idea whatsoever, which shows how shallow they are. Um, civics don't understand the reality of politics. They're people who have been too comfortable after decades of soft living. Nationalism is nature applied to politics and society. It is biology, it is common sense, it is gut instinct, as opposed to the schizophrenia of contemporary liberalism or the greed of international capitalism or, must be said, the cowardice of conservatism. Our principles, national freedom, uh, ethno-cultural order, again, an economy that's subservient to the people. These are the guarantees against surrender and betrayal. UKIP, uh, reform, uh, the Heritage Party, reclaim, are literally political contraceptives. They're hopeless. They're a complete and utter waste of time. We need to politically break the stranglehold of globalism. It is the octopus that engulfs all of the Western world. And to do that kind of thing, it's not enough just to be active. You need something inside. You need strength of belief in our nation and what we can do in the future. And we'd like to see like-minded, kindred Western nations with nationalist governments who can break that stranglehold of the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, World Health Organization, EU, uh, IMF, and of course, NATO. And in that struggle, political obviously, it will require every ounce of psychological resilience to halt their plans of one world dominated exclusively by them. Us and the rest of the West must take back uh, true freedom, political freedom, financial, economic freedom, our sovereignty and our ethno-cultural unity. We can ignore people like Farage and Tice, they're plastic patriots. Their mantra, which they try to give themselves some semblance of media respectability, we want immigration, is effectively saying uh, you do increase the GDP, that is true, but it lowers living standards, it stagnates wages, it creates unemployment, it puts a tremendous drain on public services and ethnic Britons miss out. And also from a sort of liberal humanist point of view, when you say we want the best people from these countries, you're stripping a lot of poor countries and poor people of their resources. If they've got a good doctor in Nigeria or a nurse in India, they say, oh, come here, come here. You're taking it away from them and they suffer even more. Something perhaps that Farage and Tice haven't taken into account. Uh, they're all part of the cabal of globalism, the ones that run the media and all sort of the, excuse me, <coughs> bought and sold creatures of Parliament. Interesting to note about Parliament is that once upon a time it was a noble profession and people put their hearts and souls into it, whatever their ideology or the particular party. But a third of parliamentarians are landlords, which is why any decent housing bill never gets through, and a quarter of them are millionaires. It's just a form of showbiz. If globalism totally degrades the West, their power over the world will be absolute and it will never be displaced. If the nations of the West uh, were destroyed, their native citizens would find themselves floating about in a sea of strangers. 
which is why, again, a basic set of core nationalist principles is essential. It guarantees our survival, and which is why the British Democrats will shortly put up on our party website uh, our statement of principles. It distinguishes us from civic nationalists and others, and people who are somewhat foolish with their political approach. What about the youth? Uh, alienated, abandoned, humiliated. Um, the media have a particularly horrible, horrible word. They use it in The Guardian a lot, pale male and stale, which would include me, I suppose, and many of us who are middle-aged. Uh, you know, we are essential to the running of society, whether you're a civil servant or you're running a business. But a lot of angst is directed towards the white working class of Britain, and in particular towards the youth, and in particular towards white working class boys, the most demonised of all. You see that in adverts, you see that in dramas, made to look like fools and idiots. There is a big core of young people out there, under 25 I dare say, who desperately need idealism and a direction in life. We must especially emphasise and de-promote their potential in helping us in the resurrection of race and nation. Not civic, but not stupid street theatre either. The party can create internal and external infrastructure which will involve young nationalists and create a network across Britain. We're starting at the moment with a municipal nationalism, confident, united and organised, uh, promoting our nation and overturning this nightmare world. There used to be an old nationalist policy not so much national service in a military sense, but national service in... Sure. That's it, yeah, that we all come together and work. And when you're about 18, say for a year, forget about your work or your studies, you do something in public service. It could be farms, it could be parks, it could be rivers, it could be the hospital. Yeah. And it creates unity across all the people of the British Isles, regardless of their class or whether they're from Newcastle or Cornwall. It brings us all together. That's a policy yeah. for the future, though. Um, now, our abused uh, youth... Uh, no sense of hope, no sense of career, or getting a home, or any kind of uh, projects for the future. Child psychologists sometimes note that two ways a young person can go if they've had problems or been distressed. Uh, some go the way of mental health, sadly, substance abuse, petty crime and prostitution. But there's another group, uh, those who have a feeling of betrayal, a sense of grievance, angry energy. But that energy must be uh, channeled, that outrage must be channeled into intelligent political nationalism. And with us, peaceful, legal, political, and for them, alienated as they are, creating a sense of belonging. <clears throat> Activity. Our way of nationalism, community-based politics, is from the ground upwards. It's making foundations and eventually uh, a network will be established. <clears throat> in na uh, nationalism, campaigning across Britain, at local level, we can look at housing, we look at green spaces, very important, social services, education, street refuse, all part and parcel of things that eventually will lead us to the political defence of our communities. These small steps, these building blocks, are recreating British communities eventually and insulating us against multiculturalism and crime. Uh, encouraging eventually a level of self-sufficiency, at the same time still putting down roots and eventually building up to create an alternative structure of power, our facts on the ground. We live in a terrible time. Uh, again, to quote Enoch Powell in one of his speeches, he says, the first duty of the state is to protect its citizens. He wasn't talking about foreign armies or submarines or uh, tanks or anything like that. He was talking about internally within society. And this society fails that at every level. They don't protect people at all. It's not largely the fault of the police. They are literally instruments of the establishment, of the system. But also we have this horrific situation now where there are two sets of laws that apply, as has been mentioned earlier on in this meeting. One is where someone who's a native Britain might in public say words or on social media uh, put something in print uh, which would be considered offensive or inciting to hatred and they end up in prison. And yet, in reverse, you have native Britons who come under violent physical attack. Uh, a lot of their perpetrators will get a suspended sentence, or what is happening a great deal now is they will be sent to a mental hospital. Because if they go to a mental hospital, the whole thing is buried. Oh, they're ill. That's the end of it. Because in a court of law, if they're supposed to be of sane mind, there will be a question about their motivation and why they did that particular yeah. crime. They don't want that. They just want their buried outside. You'll see that again and again. This is the state we live in. Uh, something that was mentioned at the uh, party AGM last November was we need to look at multi-levels of power. Elections, obviously, if you can get in a parish or district level or county council level. But we need all sorts of forms, uh, things that we can be involved in in different campaigns. I remember Adrian Romley talking about some sort of legal assistance. You know, if someone really was in trouble, it might be a young man who's not in the party or even part of the nationalist movement. But he might need help with a legal defence fund and also sort of moral support as well. There's different ways that we can provide a survival mechanism for our people and not just elections. And 
though it may seem odd, in the past we, we were very, very belligerent, and I have the scars to prove it, uh, and sometimes we were silly. We have to be a bit passive at the moment. Uh, you have to endure, and that's a kind of strength in itself. You have to be a bit like, God forbid, Martin Luther King or Gandhi. Uh, passive resistance, because what you have to look at is what's on the other side of the hill, and that is the British establishment. Now, they're a mixed bunch. They, they don't all hate us. They don't all uh, have contempt for us. There are a large group of them who would, would want us banned tomorrow, or not existing, or any kind of nationalist existing. But some of them are just indifferent. They don't really care. Uh, some of them, believe it or not, even in the civil service, may be sympathetic towards us. There's also a big core who don't really approve of our policies, but in a fair British way, uh, they do believe in free speech and liberty and democracy. The worst thing you can do is, by being a stupid street theatre group, is alienate all the groups in the establishment, and then you can see a band come in. That's why initially you have to be a bit pacifistic and a bit patient and ultimately intelligent with what you do. You can also build, in, as I said, in those areas from the ground upwards. Because you get strength in one area, it makes a difference. It repels internal immigration. Um, I saw this in the 80s where the old uh, Nationalist Party, the predominant Nationalist Party, certain branches had collapsed and they never re reformed again, but some branches carried on. The branches that still had a Nationalist presence stayed British longer than the ones where the branches had collapsed. There was a small focus of activity. Even putting out a thousand leaflets has a ripple effect. And those on the other side know that there's people who are resisting. They're, they're fighting back and it keeps those areas going. We can do all that kind of thing, and as I said, it's a form of controlling internal immigration. Uh, bear with me, sorry about the throat. Uh, <coughs> ultimately, it's the path to victory, and that is our purpose. And wonderful opportunities are coming up at the moment. Uh, you see the dispute in Texas about what goes over the border, and the, the Texas authorities are putting up barbed wire, and Joe Biden wants to take it down. There's a bit of a, a strain there. You can see the farmers uh, in France, many of the farmers have suddenly realised, it's on social media, that part of the problem with France is massive immigration. They're not going to uh, do that anymore. They're not going to pay their taxes. That's why they're digging up the roads. You have the AFD doing very well in Germany and being dis uh, discussed quite a lot. We tend to lag behind Britain. I think that's just our nature. But then we tend to get out in front again, like we did with the Industrial Revolution or nuclear physics. We seem to be nowhere, and then we sort of pop up and we come first. We can surprise people. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the society we live in has nothing to offer whatsoever. The people who run the society, the system, the establishment and nation records, all they've given us, certainly in recent years, is lockdowns, foreign wars, relentless mass immigration, crime, injustice, declining standard of living, poor health, filthy streets and chaos. These are real physical effects. The society crumbles. <clears throat> the current world, as I said, has nothing to offer. Uh, you look at the Roman Empire, you might get taken over by the Romans, but you had very good roads, you had law and order, and you had food. Uh, you was looked after to some extent, as same as the British Empire as well. The people who are on this society who live in a bubble, they're part of the global elite, have absolute contempt for us, they're a hostile elite. Um, the next few decades won't be very pleasant. Ethnic Britons face a bottleneck scenario, and they need to evolve to survive. But that starts ultimately with politics. And our political business at the moment is basic survival. The work we do now is of vital, fundamental importance. Even though parish pump politics may seem tame, you know, a little bit insignificant, that's how you start off with small steps, and then you move on <coughs> to a bigger picture afterwards. Many of us, sadly, will not see the full uh, salvation of Great Britain, but will take part through our descendants as fragments of the future. Uh, but many of us will not just see the salvation of our ancient nation, starting with the rebirth and the renaissance of Britain, a start of a new cycle of glittering civilization. Great Britain, independent, ethnically homogenous, with an economic culture that supports all of our people. A powerful, moving idea worthy of our sacrifice. Our nation, our people, our victory. Thank you. Hey, hey.